There we go. Right, so a number of people have asked for this video. Today we're going to be cooking a crab and picking it. Uh, we'll be using a spider crab that we've caught. Now, what I tend to do is I always tend to, as you can see we are outside, I cook crab outside because it has a very strong smell. The spider crab and the brown crab we get also. Um, lobster's not too bad, but like I say, I mean, some people, you, you can cook it in your house if you want. It all depends. I mean, if you've got a closed kitchen, great. If you've got an open plan kitchen, it might be better to cook it outside. Um, it depends how much it bothers you. So, so what I'm using here is a uh, camping stove. Normally I'd use one which is attached to a cylinder, like a ring, but mine is broken, so I had to buy just a camping stove, which will work fine. It's a little bit slower. And I preheat the water actually in a kettle in the house and just pour it in, then reboil it. Now when you're doing the crab, personally uh, I like to get the water as hot as you can get it. You know, get it really boiling before you're going to drop a crab in. Now, the old way is they used to drop crabs straight in, they don't worry about it. Um, in the modern world, it's changed a little bit. I tend to put mine in the freezer because the crab is cold blooded, like the lobsters. And if you cool them right down, you pretty much put them into a coma and then they'll die when it reaches a certain temperature. You see this sometimes when you get like lobsters and crabs and things washing up on the beaches when they've had a particularly cold snap of weather. And basically these things get so slow and then you get a bit of a storm and they just can't do anything against it because they're moving so slow or they're almost in hibernation mode. So um, yeah, I've always found that to be the, the sort of kindest way. I um, mean that's my own opinion. Now you can go down the route of sticking knives and things, but to be honest, if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably better off not. And I've also seen years ago we had a, a very large lobster and we decided to cut it in half because we weren't going to boil it, we were going to grill it. So we thought, well, we want to kill it first. We don't want to just, you know, um, stick it on a grill alive. Anyway, we chopped this thing in half and this thing kicked for ages in two pieces and it was such a disturbing sight. I'm never going to do that again. So, yeah, so like I say, put them in the freezer, but don't, let, don't freeze them obviously. A lobster is only 30 minutes a crab, so the 30 minutes or so. You're just trying to get it down to the point where it's in a coma or practically dead. And once it hits that boiling water, the shock will be massive. So as you probably just heard, plane flew over. Happens every time you try and record. This island's getting so many planes over it now, it's getting ridiculous. Um, so what I tend to do is get a handful of salt. Not a handful, but you know, a large pinch. And just chuck that into the water. That will help with the flavour. If not, you can actually cook in seawater as well. I've done that before, brought seawater back and actually cooked straight in that. It does give it a better flavour, I think. Crab, it's not so bad, because crab is quite strong. Lobster, it helps. Now, cooking times for crab, you're gonna, you wanna, like I say, get it to the boil. You'll throw the crab in, then you will bring it back to the boil, and then you wanna leave the crab for about 20 minutes. It all depends on the size quite often, and, and what kind of crab you're cooking if it's for the sake of shell. Um, but you can cook, cook crab longer, 25 minutes if you want. Um, it doesn't affect the flavour too much. If you're cooking lobster, like the blue lobster we get, I don't know so much on the other ones, the spiny lobster, but the blue one, you want to cook that anything from 15 to 20 minutes or so. Again, depending on size. But with lobster, if you overcook it, the meat will get tougher and it'll end up being like rubber so you never want to overcook lobster and like I say again a little bit of salt in the water and it will help with the flavour right I'm gonna go and grab this crab and hopefully he's cold enough okay now I took the crab out of the freezer and it was all cooled down to the point where it just wasn't moving um, it wasn't quite dead but it was close enough uh, dropped it in the boiling upside down head first and pretty much killed it straight away. Now I did film it, unfortunately I didn't switch the camera on when I did it and I can't go back and do it again obviously so here's the crab in here. Now I let the crab cool down in the water uh, I don't like taking it out again for the flavour and obviously it's going to be very hot when you pull it out the out the water so it could dry the meat out I don't know for sure, I've never really, like I say, I have taken it out once or twice, but it's too hot to do anything with anyway, so. Now I'm just draining some water out of the crab, if you're not seeing anything happening yet, just from the back of the shell, because you can see I've got newspaper down, this is to catch any water, bits of crab that might come off, that kind of thing. 
And hopefully this crab hasn't got too much water in it because that would be, not be a very good crab. It's quite a bit of water coming out the shell there. Huh? Okay, let's leave it at that. So, there's your one crab. Now, what tools do you use? It's entirely up to you. But, what I tend to use is you see this, it's just a spoon, but it's got like a curved sort of handle, there's a slight curve in there. And this is great for picking the meat. The, the, the art of doing the crab is to try and get the crab meat out without smashing the shell up so much you've got tons of little bits of shell in your, in your meat, because I hate getting shell in meat when I'm eating it. Got a knife, this is to get into bigger areas. It's also useful because you can break parts of the crab with it. And I've just got like a little old aluminium meat hammer, ancient thing this. But it's just to basically crack the shell. You can use nut crackers, pliers, whatever you want, hammers. So, let me see. So the first thing you do, obviously, is wash your hands. Especially when you're dealing with food for other people. Now the legs, I'm just going to come around and check. Because I haven't actually got a, a, a thing that I can see what I'm doing from this side. Right, so the legs, what you do is, what you want to do is you want to pull this leg off, but you want to get this socket out, so you bend them back and get the socket out, like so. And you do this with each one, like that, like that, that one, and then the claw. Like so, you want to get all those sockets, that there is meat, so you need yourself a bowl. You can literally just pull that meat off the end and put your claw down. Now, if you get one, I don't know if I can break one without it, let me just try. If you get one, say, like this, that the, say it breaks off like that, so it's basically left without the ball on it, you want to get that out, because when you go to pull that one, probably the same will happen, because it can't bend back far enough. The way to do that, now you can, with a smaller crab, you'd use like a spoon, and you'd push it in there, and you'd pop that out. Or, with the bigger crab, you can just get a strongish knife, put it in there, and basically pop that out like that. And it's out. And then you just do the same again here, pull them all out, like that, get any meat off that comes out with it from the body. And the claw. So you see that one's done it. But like I say, not a problem, just get in there. And it'll, so, it'll also make it easier when you come to pick the crab afterwards. So put it in there and just, the claw's obviously a bit more awkward because it's bigger. There we go, pop it out like that, so you don't have the knuckle in there. Alright, let me just... And I just use the old pan, you can't see it, but pan to the side to throw the old bits of shell in. Now, you can either start with your legs or start with your body, it doesn't matter. We will start with the body. With a spider crab, and with all crabs actually, that I've ever worked with, big ones, you basically grab the shell like this with your hands, put your fingers on the back and just push and it will pop out. Now, you can see all this here. All this gunk and brown, they call it crab dressing, or they call it the brown meat. Some people eat this. Personally, if you want it, knock yourself out. Me, no. I don't fancy having any of that. It's basically what's coming into the crab and all the rest of it, and I have no interest in, in eating that. Now, if there was a war on, or we were starving, then I probably would eat it, but there isn't. So, like I say, I prefer to just eat the white meat. So then what you do is you break off the mouthpieces. You've got these things here. These are what's known as dead man's fingers. Get rid of those, that's the lungs. You do not want to eat those. So you pull all those off. And then you pull all these off. So it's like that. Then, the underneath here, you just grab that, male or female, whichever one, and you pop that up like that, and you get rid of that. And then this stuff again, if you want to keep it and eat it, it's entirely up to you, I don't. So what I tend to do is I'll take this to the sink and just give it a quick rinse. back and you'll see that I've cleaned the cavity out. There's a bit in there but it, it a little bit doesn't matter. Paper tissue and soak up some of this water. 
thing is when you're um, doing these uh, the legs after these um, you don't want water on here if you can help it because when you smash stuff it'll splash everywhere so it's just about keeping things clean really there's actually quite a bit still coming out of this anyway. right so now this is the bit that people vary like I said before if you're doing a crab and you don't like shell in your crab don't start smashing your crab up you can actually get the meat out of this without having to break it. I tend not to break it. If I do ever break it, I'll cut it in half with a knife. Just literally put a knife through the middle. Um, obviously, wherever you come from with different crabs, it'll be different. You might cook just the actual crab. Some places I've seen you do that. Um, but all this in here, you see all this here, this is all meat. So I'll just put that up there. It's going to get a bit weird, but So basically, you know, you can start off by just hooking that out, but that all goes to the leg cavities anyway. So when you start pushing the leg cavities here, this is why you get this little spoon with a little curve in it. Because you can get in there and you can hook all that meat out and there's no need to break the shell. Um, up here can be a little bit difficult, especially on the smaller crabs because there is chambers up here. But with these large ones, again, not a problem. And I'd just like to say this is my least favourite job, is picking crab. <laughs> I do not enjoy it, but I love crab, so it's one of these things that you've got to do it if you want to eat it. And I personally don't particularly want to go out and buy a crab myself. Not when it's on my front door, pretty much. So you just keep working that, you go through all these channels, right through these ones, you'll see a lot of meat coming out of there. It's like pure white meat, pretty much. Well, I mean, there's a little bit of colour in it, but the, nothing to worry about there. Same there. And if you do this carefully, it is a bit thin, the shell, but if you do it carefully, take your time, you'll see that we're clearing it out, and we're not getting any shell into this crab at all. You'll see some people take a flaming rolling pin to, to a crab, start smashing it up, breaking it up, trying to get the meat out, and all these tiny little bits of white, because this is very fine, this. We'll go into here, you won't see it, and when you're eating it, you'll find it, and it's, like I say, it kind of, for me, it kind of ruins the meal. Not completely ruins it, but, you know, it's not as good a meal when you get to start getting a few bits of shell in your crab crunching away. I like it, like I say, with no shell whatsoever. If I get more than one or two pieces, that was not a good pick. If I get zero, that was, that was a good pick. I mean, there's always going to be the odd bit when you're breaking stuff like the legs and that, that flies up in the air and goes in your bowl which you can't avoid. Right, well, I'm going to finish this off and then we'll come back and do the legs. Right, that's the body done. Uh, I don't know if you can see down inside but you'll see that it's pretty much hollowed out. There's nothing much in here, you can hear. Pretty much empty now with the smaller ones sometimes if there's more bits left in here you can put these in well you could put this in but you can put these into crab pot after and they do catch lobster but that one has actually picked I've picked quite thorough now this bowl may not look like much but this bowl is a lot bigger than normal it's not a cereal bowl it's a lot bigger than a cereal bowl this is about probably two cereal bowls put together. Right, now the legs. Let me get rid of that out of the way when we start doing this. So the legs. What you do is you basically get the leg and you just bend it back against itself. You can do that and you can actually pull the meat out sometimes. If the crab is not that full, the meat will come out. If the crab is packed, the meat won't because it gets stuck in there. Um, it's easier to pick one that's not full but then you're not going to get much. Again, just bend them back and then when you get no, legs like this part, you don't need to shatter it, you can actually, with a crab this big, just put, put this in, hook out the bits of meat that's in there, and it'll pop out. Um, I will smash the other legs, but uh, yeah, you can do that. You can use whatever, like I said, little tools you've got to get the meat out. And like I say, what I tend to do is I just go along, I do all the, these things you don't pick. But just break them all like that, now I can pick. 
if you're ever out in the wilds and you get one of these, you can use things like the ends of this on anything, lobsters, claws, grab, to pick the meat out if you don't have any tools as such to do it. So, put those eggs, I'll do this separate. So now what you do, just do this. Now the thing is with this, every crab's going to be different. Why is every crab going to be different? It depends on the shell. A brown crab, the other crab we get, the shell is very hard. It's like porcelain and it shatters. This crab, the shell is, it's still shell, but it's got more flex to it. So when you hit things, it tends to bounce more, whereas the other ones tend to shatter. This will shatter, but it's, you can see it, you can hit it and you can feel it bouncing. And the idea is when you're breaking it, you see I cracked the shell, but I haven't smashed it completely. Sometimes you can't get it always perfect and you will smash. Again, you see, it's cracked, so basically it just pops open. I can get to the meat like this without having thousands of bits of shell in it. So you can take that out like that carefully, pull that little bit of meat out, throw that away, then go into the leg and hook out the meat that's in there like that. It's fiddly and it doesn't look like a lot, but it all mounts up. So once you've vented that, there's a bit on the end there which has come out the other end. Away again. And you just keep doing that basically. You you know you can take the big ones as well. And basically you're trying to Oh, that one went for a spin, it took the meat with it. You can see that they spring it. This one's quite springy, and you see the meat like that. Again, the shell is broken, but it's not shattered into a million pieces. So you can hook the meat out. Just get rid of that. And you'll see the meat's gone. Same with that end, I just pulled that out so there's no meat on that bit. Okay. And just keep doing that, like I say, just literally break it. And if you get something that's still sort of together, you can just get a knife and just tease them apart like that. You're literally just trying to get entry to the leg to get that meat out. Of course, if you don't mind shelling your crab, and you don't mind chomping away on lots of shell, then by all means, smash it to bits. Right, I'm going to get this done, and then we'll move on to the claws. Okay, on to the claws. Same thing, take the claw, bend it back against itself like that. And the same with that, just bend it back so it breaks. This is, you can do this on spider crab. <clears throat> when you get a shanker, which is the brown crab, if you have a problem with the claws because they can be very strong, this is what you can use this for. If you take a knife like this with a hard handle, and then all you've got to do with that is just basically smack it there on these joints, and you'll break, it's like a ball joint there. I don't know if you can see it, but in here is like a ball joint. If you break that top, this will just come away. So the hardest crabs, just smack them there, and the joint will go, and then you've got them separated. These, they're quite easy, so you just do that. And again, do that. Now, with these parts, once again, it's just a case of literally going in there with this, and just hooking out the meat like that. It's big enough, this one. If the crab's smaller, you'll have to obviously break it. So you get all your meat out of that. That's it. There's actually not as much meat as I'd hoped there'd be in this crab. But crabs vary. It's luck of the draw, really. Um, some you'll find are absolutely packed with meat. Others will be <clears throat> almost empty. Depends how well they fed. And obviously you never want to take crabs that their shells are soft or not soft, but um, crispy kind of thing where the shell isn't that hard because they'll just be full of water because they won't have got their meat yet from 
feeding and changing their shell. So with those you literally just do that, I'll pull that one down, because what I'll do is I'll just show you this. And again, with this you just gotta take this, put somewhere dryish, dryish, and just literally do that till it you see it's cracked. I don't know if you can see that, but flip it over. It's actually cracked here. There. Now I could probably give it one more hit. See, now it's cracked. And the idea with that, again, just do this. you've got to be a little careful. You can cut yourself quite easy on this. Just pop the shell like that. So now you pop that off, and now you have a big chunk of meat there. you just got to take that off because there's obviously a tendon in underneath that bit of shell. That way, no shell on your crab meat. Another thing is if you feel it on your hands, just give your hands a rinse every so often to get rid of any fine bits of shell. And that way you'll end up with no shell at all. So there you have it. One bowl of freshly picked crab meat. Now, I know in America I see a lot of you, you eat it with butter. Me, personally, with this crab, or with the brown crab, I like to have this um, just with a little bit of salt and vinegar on it and it is absolutely perfect. Um, this will be going on tonight on a bit of salad, bit of lettuce, you know, cucumber, tomatoes, bit of bread, bit of salt and vinegar on it, absolutely perfect. And all this stuff in here, which you'll see in here, which is the shell and everything, I'll be taking that back out in the boat and putting it into the sea where all the other crabs and fish and that will feed off of the little bits that are still in there. And if I wasn't gonna do that, I'll dig it into the vegetable garden and um, it'll fertilize the soil. So there you go, that is spider crab.